A final round close to perfect. Henrik Stenson literally running away with the Players' Championship. Steve Elling, our golf columnist, was there, and he joins us now. Steve, what a show put on by Stenson, keeping the bogeys off his card on Sunday. He's been known for a lot of things outside his golf game, but the golf was all the rage on Sunday. Yeah, it was um, say what you want and make all the jokes you want about um, you know his famous incident down there at Doral a couple of months ago, but uh, man, the guy was flat out the best player on the golf course on the weekend. There was no taking that away from him yesterday, and he just wasn't in any trouble. He didn't have to work hard. You know, I spent a lot of time, a couple hours, a couple hours of my life, I will never get back watching Tiger and Cheka in the final group walking around yesterday. And, uh, you know, I was missing the show because Stenson was putting on a clinic. You know, who would have thought a guy from Sweden would be the one who would endure on a, you know, 90-odd degree day on baked out greens. And, uh, you know, I thought the Swedes were known for making snowmen and having reindeer and stuff like that. And the, the guy played like um, the Desert King. It definitely looks like it came easy to him. He is now the fifth golfer in eight, fifth international golfer in eight years to win the players. Why is that, Steve? Wow, good question. Um, I, I can give you um, a, a semi-educated answer to that. Um, it, part of it's the golf course. Maybe, maybe a lot of it is the golf course. And there, there's a higher proportion of international players in this field. Um, I mean, Henrik Stenson's not a member of the PGA Tour. He was a couple of years ago, and he gave up his membership because. Uh, it, it was hard for him to play his uh, required 15 events here and still play over in Europe, where, you know, which is where uh, you know, he kind of places his priorities right now. Uh, so that's one answer. The second answer would be the golf course itself. Uh, it's kind of funny. I was talking all week to some guys about this. Um, the Players' Championship, TPC Sawgrass, uh, the blessing of that course can also be its curse, and that is that uh, just about any player has a chance there, as evidenced by Fred Funk winning a few years ago, the shortest hitter on the PGA Tour at that time. Uh, you know, and then uh, you come back the next year, and a, a long hitter like Adam Scott wins. It gives everybody a chance, and that you know that also means that you know you get some winners in there that cause people to scratch their heads. And you know, I think your average sidewalk golf fan might scratch his head, and uh, you know, it might not resonate so much that Steve Ames beats VJ Singh in a duel down the stretch when they don't know much about Steve Ames. So, uh, you know, the the golf course brings a lot more people into the mix. Um, Foreign-born, U.S.-born, long hitter, short hitter. It's basically just becomes a complete wild card. And, and Steve, you can't you can't talk about the winner without talking about the could have been. And I'm talking about Alex Checa. What right. a comfortable lead going into Sunday. That fold. What do you make of all that? You know, this is the second week in a row um, that I've been out there with the leader in the final group on Sunday walking around. Um, you know, eight days ago at Quail Hollow, Zach Johnson had the lead, and he puked that thing up in two holes. He made uh, what he made a six on the second hole, and his lead was gone. Uh, Alex Chaka blew a five-shot lead in four holes. Uh, by that time, he was tied for the lead, and then after five holes, his lead was totally gone. He'd fallen out of the he'd fallen out of the lead. A little more surprised that Zach uh, that it happened to Zach because he's got a, a much more of a professional pedigree and obviously won a major a couple years ago at the Masters. Uh, Chaka not as much. Uh, he'd never really been in this position, you know, and he also had the uh, the dual issue of having to play alongside Tiger Woods, uh, you know, on the circus that accompanies him. So. Uh, Jake had kind of made a little comeback in the middle of the round. You know, it was, uh, I'm sure it was gratifying for his fans to see him do that. But, man, that's a tough ask for a guy that's never won in the U.S. and hasn't been in that position hardly ever uh, to play with Tiger Woods on a golf course that's that hard and there's that thin of a margin for error. But, yeah, it was a little surprising that it went that far afield that fast. You mentioned he had to play with Tiger Woods, but that really wasn't a factor this weekend like it could have been a standstill kind of for Tiger on Sunday. The last two weeks he hasn't been able to finish. Is he human, Steve? Yeah, he's clearly human. Um, you cut him and he'll bleed, and he's been bleeding a lot lately. Uh, I think, to me, the, the image from this year's Players' Championship that I'm going to have in my head was him on the second hole. He pulls out a three wood and snap hooks it into a tree and it falls down about 10 feet from where I'm standing. He got it about 30 yards past the ladies' tee is all the further that that went. Gets over his next ball and basically shoves it right in the middle of a water hazard. Water hazard. So, you know, he hits the, that first shot dead left, the second shot dead right, and it's kind of been, um, it's kind of been that way for a while. 
nobody's got any idea what to expect from him right now. One day he putts it great, the next day he doesn't. Uh, he's struggling getting ball close to the hole. Missed a couple of greens on the front nine on Sunday with uh, wedges and short irons in his hand. You know, you, you just can't miss greens. You got to get, you got to take uh, uh, opportunities in the green light zones and knock the ball in there and score, which is where he's made his career. So, you know, right now, basically the only holes he's been taken care of are the par fives, which you can just kind of out muscle and blow it down there in two and get up and down and make birdies. The rest of it's been pretty sloppy and. You know, it'll be interesting to see. Um, we're all expecting them to take the next three weeks off as the tour heads down into Texas for, you know, San Antonio, Colonial, and the Byron Nelson. Uh, he hasn't played those in the past year, so I'm not anticipating any change there and expecting him to show up again at Nicholas's tournament, the Memorial in Columbus. Uh, you know, he's got three weeks off. Is is he going to fix it? Is is Maybe three weeks off isn't what he needs. Maybe he needs more live, live fire. I'm, I'm not quite sure. So only one more stop that I would expect between now and the U.S. Open going back to Beth Page, where he won the, the Open um, geez, seven years ago now already. So um, a lot of question marks, um, more question marks coming out than there were going in for him. Well, he's definitely been here before in a little bit of a rut, and then he bounces back to crazy golf. So we'll see how that all works out. Steve Elling, thanks for your time. You got it. And thank you for watching Everything Golf right here on the site. I'm Lauren Shahadi. We'll see you soon.